Hey guys, what's up? It's Kevin. Welcome back to my channel. So in this series, I'm going to be doing a complete beginner's guide for how to solve the 3x3 Rubik's Cube. So guys, in this specific video, which is part one of the series, I'll be showing you full cube notation, which are letters that signify how a cube will turn. However, before I officially begin this tutorial, I will need to go over the 3x3 cube notation rules. So starting off with rule number one, an uppercase letter like this signifies a single layer turn on the cube. Rule number two, a lowercase letter like this signifies a double layer turn. Rule number three, a plain letter with no symbol after it, as shown here, signifies a clockwise layer rotation. The way you know it's clockwise is based on the letter, you look at that side, which I'll show you later, you look at the side, rotate it clockwise, how you look at it. Rule number four, an apostrophe after the letter given, as shown here, signifies prime or inverted, which means you rotate the layer given counterclockwise, like this. And finally, for rule number five, if you see a two after the letter given, you will know that you have to turn the layer twice. This is called a double turn. Now, it doesn't matter if you turn it clockwise or counterclockwise, because since there are four sides on a square, two is half, so it will get to the same spot either way. So now that all of the notation rules are over with and out of the way, I will now be going over all of the letter notations that you will see on the 3x3. Now just to note, some of these letters will actually not be used during the actual tutorial, but I thought it'd still just be useful to show you full notation anyway, just to give you some background information. So I'm gonna start off with the six most basic cube notations. So just an overview, they are R, L, F, B, U, and D. Now I want you to hold the cube with green facing U and white on top. Now that we are holding the cube cor correctly, I can go over the cube notations. For the first six examples, the letters are all going to be capital. To start off, we have R, which you look at the right side of the cube and move it clockwise. Similar to this, R prime would still be R, but you move it counterclockwise. Now, we will go to L, which means left. Left, you look at the left side of the cube and turn it clockwise. L prime, or L apostrophe, will be counterclockwise. Now a quick helpful tip, R and L are opposite directions because they are on opposite sides of the cube. R would go that way and L would come this way. Next up we have U which means up, so we're going to look at the upper face of the cube and turn it clockwise. Similar to this, U prime is just the opposite direction. And opposite of U we have D which stands for downside. So we're gonna look at the bottom and you're gonna move it clockwise. See, we're moving it clockwise. Counterclockwise would be the opposite direction. Like that, so that is D prime. And then we have F, which means front side. So we will move the front clockwise and F prime, which is counterclockwise on the front side. And finally, we have B, which is the back side of the cube. And I know sometimes B is difficult to know which way to turn it, so you will start off with F, which goes this way, and B, since it's the opposite side, will just be the opposite direction. So this is B, and this is B prime. And then of course we have double turns, which is just the letter with the two after it. So here's U2, here's R2, F2, B2, D2, and L2. We will now move on to the little or lowercase letters. Little letter notation can be executed as following. You will move the letter given the same as its uppercase letter, the same way. However, instead of just moving a single layer, you are also going to move, be moving it with the middle layer. So, 
little R. Give me that. Little R prime. And little R2. Little U. Little U prime. Little U2. Little F. Little F prime. Little F2. Little D. Little D prime. Little D2. Little L. Little L prime. Little L2. And little B. Little B prime. Little B2. Next up, I will go over the slice moves on the cube, which moves all of the middle layers. These slice moves are known as M, which means middle, E, which means equator, and S, which means standing. So first I'm going to go over the M, or the middle layer, which is corresponding to the left side. This means that if you want to do an L, that's going to be M. If you want to do M prime, which is that way, you know that by looking at the left side, since L prime is that way, M prime is also that way. And then similarly, you have M2. Next up, we have the E slice move, which again means equator. And this move is corresponding to the U side, or the upper side. So if you want to do an E, you think U, so then E would also be that direction. If you wanted to do E prime, it's U prime, but on the middle layer. And then you have E2, which just moves it twice in either direction. And finally, we have the S slice move, which again, for clarification, means standing. The S slice move moves correspondingly to the F move. So if you want to do an S, you would think of F, which moves that way. So you do the S that way as well. If you want to do S prime, you think of F prime. And you move the S layer in that direction. And then, of course, we have S2, which just moves it twice in either direction. And now for the last set of moves that you need to know, they are the cube rotations, which is how you rotate a cube during a solve. The letters used for cube rotation are X, Y, and Z. Beginning with the X rotation, X moves on this axis right here. And X also corresponds with the R move. So it's basically like you want to do an R, except you move the whole cube that way. And an R prime, Instead of doing that, it's like moving the whole cube as an R prime. So since X is corresponding with R, X would be the same as R, and X prime would be the same as R prime. And similarly, you have X2, which is the same as R2, and you can do that in either direction, it won't matter. Next up, we have the Y rotation, which moves on this axis right here, and it is corresponding with the U phase. So if you wanted to do a Y, it's the same as doing U, except instead of moving only a single layer, you move the whole cube that direction. Similarly, if you wanted to do a Y prime, it'd be the same as doing a U prime, except moving the whole cube in that direction. And then if you wanted to do a Y2, it's like U2, you just move it twice. And again, it doesn't matter which direction. And finally, for the last cube rotation, and the last move you can do on a cube, this is the Z move, which rotates on this axis right here. Z corresponds with the F face, so if you wanted to do a Z, you would think of F, except you move the whole cube in that direction. If you wanted to do a Z prime, you'd think of F prime, except you move the whole cube in that direction. And finally, if you wanted to do a Z2, think of F2, it doesn't matter which way you turn it, because it'll end up at the same spot, but you would move the Z rotated twice. So guys, that's going to have to be all for this video. Stay tuned for the next parts in the series to come out. And don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel. Also, make sure to turn on notifications so you are notified when the next parts come out. Comment down below if you enjoyed the video and if you found it helpful. And as always, I'll see you all next time. Bye.